The Midnight Gang by David Williams and illustrated by Tony Ross. Chapter 31. The World's Oldest Child. Meanwhile, a few floors below, Team 3 was sweeping through the wards of sleeping patients on the lookout for balloons. Tom and the porter both found it hard work, crawling along the floor on their hands and knees, trying not to be seen. What made it even more difficult is that they both had dozens of balloons tied to them. It was way past midnight now, and all that could be heard was the snoring of the patients, many of them old. <coughs> the nurses were at their stations, but with nothing much for them to do in the middle of the night, some had dozed off, while others were reading books. Just as Tom and the porter were crawling out of the big swing doors at the end of a ward, they heard an old lady call after them, Oh my, what beautiful balloons! Are they for me? And there's a picture of the porter and Tom, tied up with balloons, floating above them, crawling around on the floor. Tom looked to the porter, who put his fingers to his lips, to signal to be as quiet as possible. And there's a picture of the porter. Shh. And there's the nurses asleep or reading books whilst asleep. I said, are they for me? I do so love balloons. The voice was louder this time. It couldn't be ignored. There was a chance the nurses who were napping at their station just a few paces away would wake up if the old lady said another word. Tom looked up. An impossibly elderly lady was sitting up in her bed. Her face was wrinkled and her hair white as snow. Unlike most of the other patients, she didn't have any cards or flowers by her bed. Her table was completely bare, aside from a jug of water and a plastic cup. Come on, said Tom to the porter. The boy wanted to press on, but the porter looked torn. The man shook his head. No, Tom, sir, we can't just ignore her. I've never seen such beautiful balloons in all my life. I love them, said the old lady. Who sent them to me? Was it father? The old lady looked in her nineties, maybe even older. It was as if the years had shrunk her, like a piece of fruit left out in the sun. Tom realised it wasn't just the old lady's body that had weakened. Her mind must have done too if she thought her father was still alive. It was impossible. Tom was completely lost as to what to say or do. As he rose to his feet, the balloons bouncing around him, he whispered to the porter, Her father can't still be alive, surely? No, of course not, whispered back the porter. Nelly here is ninety-nine and has no family left alive. Well, what should we do about the balloons? asked Tom. Nelly thinks she is still a little girl, so we must play along. Let me... The porter turned to the old lady. Yes, Nelly, your father sent you this. He handed the old lady the balloon that was closest to her. It was one he had swiped several beds earlier. It was a little deflated and had, I love you, Grandad, written on it. Not that Nelly seemed to mind. Her face lit up as she held the string. Oh, I love this one. It's absolutely beautiful, she cooed. And you are beautiful for delivering it to me. Tom looked up to the porter. The boy imagined the man had never been called beautiful before. Did father have a message for me when he might be picking me up? As the porter was lost for words, Tom stepped in. Soon, Nelly, the boy said. You'll be seeing him very soon. Really? Yes, really, replied Tom. Oh, goody, goody, the old lady smiled and the years melted away. It was as if she really was a little girl again. And there's a picture of the porter giving Nelly the balloon. And the porter looks like he really does care. We have to go, said Tom. Are you delivering balloons to the other children like me in the hospital today? She asked. Yes, said Tom, his voice cracking with emotion. That's exactly what we're doing. Splendid, she replied. You have so many. Be careful you don't take off. <laughs> Tom and the porter shared a look. She was one step ahead of them. We must go, said the porter. Do come back and see me again soon, said the lady, her eyes marvelling at her new toy. 
The pair scurried out through the tall double doors, the clouds of balloons following in their wake. And there's a picture of the balloons travelling behind them as they leave through the door. The end of chapter 31. See you soon. Bye bye.